Welcome to this episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today we're going to talk about is the, is the mafia still alive? And I got a special guest joining me, Mr. Sonny Rosso. Hello to everybody. Hello What's there, up, Sonny? Mr. Stacks, how are you? I'm doing great. How have you been? All right. Well, the, the medicine's knocking me on my ass, the shot they gave me. Yeah, we got a crazy delay, but we're gonna work through it. Yeah, I don't know. You're not. I can hear myself on your end. Really? Yeah. This is not right. Every time I talk, I can hear it. (laughs) This this is not. I know something's going on, but it's all good. Maureen, how are you, Mike? What's going on, Kev? Yes, I made the live. Didn't even know. How ha, ha, how you doing, Stacks and Chat? How are you, Kev? You don't have headphones, do you? How does this sound better? I have headphones. You got headphones? Yeah. Sonny? Put them on. <laughs> I can hear myself talking. Punch, how are you, man? Salvatore was good. Shout out to everyone out there taking the time to watch this show. Oh, shit. We got Sonny Grasso watching the show. Sonny Grasso's watching his own show. (laughs) So today we're going to talk about is the mafia still alive? There's a $550 million scheme that was uncovered, and we're going to go over it. I have the indictment, and we're going to talk about it. Sadia, how are you? Hope you're having a great morning. Well, if, they're con- if, they, Mike, if they're convicted, they better Green. hit the mega millions. No, they're not convicted. They were just busted for it. Yeah, no, I'm down this the road. Was breaking they- news yesterday. And I missed it. Well, they're getting convicted. You know how the feds work. If uh, they arrest you, you're pretty much convicted. Especially when it comes to money. How's that better? Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the two men in question. This is um what are they twins? James and Joseph Laforte. Laforte. No, nope, uh-huh. they're not twins. They're 10 years different. One's one's uh Joseph is 52 and James is 46. Wow. It says pair funding principles charged with RICO indictment in addition to pending charges of security fraud, extortion, tax crimes, perjury, and obstruction. Ooh. Philadelphia second superseding indictment was filed yesterday charging a violation of the Racketeering Influence Corrupt Organization Act, RICO, Uh-oh. by three principles. Complete Business Solution Group um, called Pair Funding, also charging with various other crimes, including in the previous superseding indictment, security frauds, extortion, uh, to collect from credit, tax crime, perjury, obstruction of justice, witness retaliation, witness tampering, Announced the United States Attorney Jacqueline Romo. Uh, these principles are Joseph Laforte, 52, Joseph Cole Valletta, uh, Joe Cole, 39, and James Laforte, 46. A separate indictment was filed charging uh, Joseph and his wife. Now it gets interesting. Who charged Joseph and his wife, Lisa McClone, 43, with tax evasion, a conspiracy to avoid paying taxes, and a scheme to avoid Mm. paying approximately $1.6 million in income tax due to the state of Pennsylvania, fraudulently claiming that their residence... Uh, was Florida, when in fact they resided in Pennsylvania. Ooh. A separate indictment was filed charging Joseph Laforte and his wife um, 
According to the second superseding indictment, co-defendant Joseph Laforte, Joseph Cole, and James Laforte, the others were part of an association, in fact, RICO Enterprise, and conspiracy to commit a number of prejudice predicate crimes, including wow. crimes that related to fleeing a pair of funding, many investors, and Ooh. exonerate a uh, collection of credit from pair funding, many merchant customers. Uh, the indictment alleges that when the defendants were sued civilly by a SEC, in July 2020, which resulted in a, a receiving sh receivership taking over control of the pair funding, the enterprise took various illegal steps to attempt to regain control of pair funding to defeat the government, including through acts of obstruction of justice, I with tampering, retaliation. The enterprise was structured with Joe Laforte as the leader and the final decision maker. And it operated through various family members, including close associates. Mm. Indictment alleges that the principal purpose of Laforte Enterprises were as follows. Hold on, let's show, let me change this picture up. Now, these are the two brothers. They're not twins. They could pass for twins probably, right? Yeah. Damn close. Look, look at that. One of them was 52. The other one was 46, I believe. So uh, the indictment proposes to generate money for its leadership, members, and associates through the commission of various criminal acts, such as security frauds, wire fraud, uh, extortionate, collection of debt, obstruction of justice, and retaliation to conceal from investors, auditors, and the government and law enforcement that its members were self-dealing and enriching themselves to determine a pair of funding investors. How do I get involved with this pair? Of exactly. Oh, my God. That sounds like a Michael Francis. What do you do? Do you just make a company? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, like you, it sounds pretty uh, intricate because I think the mafia is in evolving with time, right? It has, would have to be. If they weren't, they're kicking themselves in the ass right yeah, now. Yeah, they're not going to do. They're not going to do the same things that they've always done, right? Right. They right. started with what them. They started with with normal extortion through business owners and right. bookies and tickets and all that shit, and then they're evolving to computer crimes and because you're not going to be on the street beating people up anymore. I mean, don't get me wrong; it can happen. People can, can still get killed. I'm sure it happens, and people mm -hmm. don't know about it. But there's a lot of cooperators nowadays. I mean, but this is a, you this just is a turn on YouTube. You can see. Plenty, a half a billion dollars, billion. That that's, is amazing. Yeah, that's they, that's a lot of money. They put Florida down as their address because we have no income tax down here. Smart. Yeah, and so they tried to get over on them, right? Yep, yep. To conceal Joseph Laforte's identity, criminal history, and role as leadership to the enterprise, uh, um, functional chief executor for the pair funding, because obviously he's the smart guy, right? right? And they want him to run the company, but he can't because of his criminal record. He had past dealings when he got in trouble and things like that. So oh. he, they were trying to hide his identity, but let, let him run the business. That's what I happened. You. I so, got you. Hey, Ronan. It says uh, to use exonerate. To use exonerate means including threats of violence to collect of money owed to the pair funding and by its merchant customers. So they were threatening people. There's a here's a here's a picture of them going into a business threatening people that if they didn't pay, that they would be hurt. 
And you can't do that shit nowadays. No. You threaten people and they're going to charge you with RICO. It's the bottom line. Right? That, well, the RICO is the superseding, right? The, yeah, the but, but once you start to extort people for money, once you you uh, are threatening people because they owe you money for something, they can Correct. use RICO charges against you. Well, they're not going to do it for two it's people. There's, there's more involved. Yeah, there's more involved. There's there's uh, these two. There's another guy, this guy's wife, and there's a whole bunch of people that worked underneath them. And one of, and these people are gonna go to prison. So someone's gonna start talking, right? And you know, names are gonna be popping in from all over. And you never know who's involved. Oh hell yeah! What are you kidding? But remember, they're from Philadelphia. So what do you mean? Oh oh. Hopefully, uh, this happened in Philadelphia. I got you, Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Carmela, how are you? Ronan, what's good? Yeah, who knows? Nico, what's up? Y'all want to give Boy, a special Johnny shout Boy. out to Pete. Thank you for the donation. I'm I'm really close to getting the laptop. Someone commented and said, nice. Stacks, how come you don't got the laptop? Come on, what? I got bills, and I've been saving for it. Like, what do you mean? I, I don't get tons of donations. Like, right. people are nuts, man. They think that when you're but on... But if you want to help out, you can donate. There you go. They think what? They think now, what? When you're on YouTube and you're doing all this, you got tons of money coming in. You know, like you're getting $100 an hour or something like that. It's awfully difficult to make money on YouTube. Really right? difficult. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want to donate, donate through Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Super Sticker, Super Chats. The links are in the description of this video. And I'm pretty damn close. So if you want to help me out, I really appreciate it. Every dollar goes a long way. And I give back to the community. Roger, what's up, man? Kevin, how are you? Sonny, your volume is low. He can't hear you. Sounds like you're whispering. What the fuck? I don't know what's going on. Let me see something. Speaking to the mic, Sonny. Go ahead. <laughs> I can talk, hear and you. I'm going to fix something here. If I get, yeah, if I, I get any you. close, I'll be tongue kissing it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Thank you for that, Maureen. I appreciate it. Um, someone just shared my thing. Stacks, how you doing, pal? I'm good, Nico. How are you? Damn it, Mandy. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Hell's Kitchen in the building. How is it out there, little Joe? I heard Hell's Kitchen is overrun by illegal migrants. Is that true? I heard. Mm -hmm. Great Jedi, what's up? I heard that there's been some businesses getting busted for housing legal migrants in their basement with fucking bunk beds and shit. Oh, what really? What's going on? Whoa. Yeah, New York City. It's pretty crazy. Everybody's trying to make a feel better, Roger. better, Roger. Watching from the hospital bed. Holy shit, man. Oh, no. Hopefully, I'm not the last thing you see. <laughs> that would suck. Get yes, feel it's better. jam-packed. Yeah, yeah, that's what I hear. I hear Hell's Kitchen has a couple places. The Roosevelt's not too far from Hell's Kitchen, right? I've been out there. I talked to some people. And uh, it's pretty wild. I'm I'm reluctant. Kidney failure. What the fuck? What are you drinking or something? Oh, oh man. How'd you get no. that, man? Really? Kidney failure is no joke. You got to get dialysis and all that stuff. That's terrible. Hopefully you feel better, man. Let's get back to this story. So this story broke yesterday. You know the uh, guy that doesn't, that Joey doesn't like. <laughs> Remember the one that Joey was talking about? Dan Schweitzer, I think his name is, right? The one from Philly. You know who I'm talking about? Huh? 
Sonny, you're I can't hear you. I got nothing, Sonny. God damn, man. What's going on? This guy just abandons me. It's all good. <laughs> Let's get back to the story. So Dan Schweitzer, I think that's how you say his name. He broke this story yesterday, and it's pretty uh interesting. 55 million. $550 million these guys were able to get. Like, what did they do with all the money? Where is it all? And the government wants their cut. They don't care. If you make money like that, you're giving the government their money. Yo, we're still on for today, Pavel, right? The right punch? Today's Wednesday, my friend. I didn't forget. Hey, there we can go. you hear me? Yep. Can you hear me? Oh, now I can hear you. There we go. Why yep. Not? Thomas, how are you? James, what's going on? We finally got Sonny Grasso back. For the third time. people asked some questions yesterday about you. Yeah. They wanted to know, who the hell is Sonny Grasso? That's right. So him go go check the interview we did, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of information on that interview. Absolutely. That was fun. That started off all Yeah, they wanted to know if you were related to William Grasso. William? They wanted to know if you were related to William Grasso from Connecticut, the mob mob boss that got killed up here. Oh no. They found him floating in the Connecticut River. He was with an A, wasn't it? G-R-A. Wild Man Grasso. Who? Yeah, no, yeah, I hear the delay in your... Yes, in your... we got next. You already know. It is what it is, man. Sonny oh, needs man. to be a permanent fixture on chatting with Stax. So it kind of seems Whoa. like he is. Nice. Thank you. You remember that? I think it was, uh, I forgot when exactly that happened. So here, I got another uh, case. Well, another another article about this case. So let me read you that one real quick. Okay. <clears throat> and this article was in March of 2023. It says lawyers trying to collect cash for defrauding investors hospitalized after a beating brother targeted and charged. So these two right here are the ones that gave the lawyer a beating. Philadelphia lawyer was beaten with a metal object. Are you, I'm sure it was maybe John A. Light did it. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly a flashlight after leaving the law firm. <laughs> a virtual court hearing. So he was at a virtual court, court hearing. He left on February 28th, sending him to the hospital where he received seven staples to the skull. Ooh. Uh, the injured lawyer was Gafton Afino. I can't even pronounce that, man. The Philadelphia Inquirer said, uh, Afino represented a court-appointed receiver trying to identify assets that could be used to repay belt investors in a small business lending company, Pair Funding, based Ooh. in Philadelphia. The assets included $100 million in personal and real property held oh. by Pair Funding founder and CEO Joe Laforte. Holy According shit. to the FBI affidavit, the man charged with beating is the 46-year-old James Laforte, the brother of Joseph Laforte. According to the criminal complaint filed March 6th, law enforcement identified James Laforte from uh, security videos showing a mass assailant who later removed his jacket, hat, and mask on video. That's the picture you're seeing now on the right. He has the mask and hat in his hand. Not too fucking bright, huh? Um, 
<laughs> you remove the hat and the mask. <laughs> the image matched that James the Forte captured in September 21 surveillance photo. Uh, the lawyer from Afino firm had rushed to the scene to help Afino and saw a broken flashlight on the ground. He gave the flashlight uh -oh. to the FBI that evening. Ooh. Joe's Joseph Laforte and others have been ordered to pay two hundred and nineteen million following a civil <laughs> settlement with the U S securities and exchange commission. According to Bloomberg, James Laforte is charged with retaliation against a party or witness causing bodily injury, obstruction of court proceedings, According to the FBI affidavit, James Laforte had worked for the pair funding for a period of time, and he allegedly directed other employees to travel to the business and personal homes of merchant debtors and use threats of violence and intimidation into making their payments. Lawyers wow. for James Laforte declined to comment on this matter. They are fought. Oh, my God. What do you think? Oh, forget it. They're going to be singing. Oh, they're they're uh, they're up the creek, man. This guy's got his wife involved. They uh, went and gave a beating to the fucking lawyer. Like they're they're in big trouble. Like that's almost not nothing little. Five hundred fifty million dollars. And that's how they dress. Unreal. Hitting the lawyer with the flashlight hey, is like almost the worst. How are thing. you? And look, no, the worst thing is you're caught on security camera holding the mask in your hand. In your hands, yeah. With your face showing. And he left off the a house. flashlight at the scene. So, or, or yeah, the scene of the house. I guess it, it was outside of his house or something. He beat him. Pretty crazy, man. What right. do you think of this situation? Wow. I'm surprised he even got out from beating. The I think I would have been long gone. Because, I mean, right. This new indictment came yesterday. It just came out yesterday. This is not anything old. That's the Rico. That's the Rico, right? Yeah. All of it, man. Laforte, uh, True name, his role at pair funding in criminal history, the pair funding undergoing underwriting process, the diversity and company MCA portfolio. Um, for instance, the indictment alleges that although Joe Laforte operated pair funding, referring to it as a business, he concealed his, this ownership and control by using his wife, Lisa as his nominee that's not bright either you don't get someone that's very close to you to do it no. right i mean it makes sense because you kind of trust this person that they're not going to screw you over and shit but right i yeah. mean you, you got a, a direct path right back to you right hey this is a chance you didn't even know saying that they even got involved with no, she knew. She took control of the business. She was the forefront. He was running I, it, but she was the face of the business. You know, right, right. So there's no Joe, way she didn't know. She knew. Joe Colombo was big, big with that. Yeah, the the father, not the son, right? Can you hear me? No, not. He even made a joke once, Joe Colombo. He goes, if my wife knew how many things were in her name, she'd kill me tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he put it. A lot of people do that. You know who did that recently? Sammy Gravano. He divorced his wife, Deb, and put everything in her name to avoid paying the son of Sam tax. Really? Wow. 
Did you know that? Yep. I I did not. Well, now you do. Uncle Rico. Yeah, they got Uncle Rico coming down and paying a visit to these people. <laughs> Uncle Rico. He should join the Plainfield Police Department. Caught on camera. <laughs> yeah, right? Shout Look what Ronan said. Man. Great guy. They're looking at football numbers, 20 to 30. Yeah. 100%. Yep, there. Someone's gonna talk, and and you know there's a lot more people involved, and you guys might be surprised when they start start scooping people. Absolutely, you can't keep this kind of kind of operation quiet. Will. No, that's too much money. They're not gonna fuck right. around. What are you What are you doing with that much money? Five hundred fifty million dollars. Like what? You you're you're doing it illegitimately. What do you do with all that money? You got businesses, properties, and things like that. Yeah, offshore. That's insane. It, They're putting a lot of money it's aside like stuff for People pieces. would never see in their life. What does he got a sharpie in his mouth? And masked. No, I think it's a. It looks like a sharpie, but I think it's it's a cigar. <laughs> I think they're in a cigar shop. It looks like. Yeah, it does. Looks like they spend a lot of money on gray sweatsuits, huh? Yeah. <laughs> gray hoodies and sweatsuits. <laughs> yep. And flashlights. They're saving up for hair pieces. Yeah, so this, this happened in Philadelphia, man. And I'm reading it from the government website. This is from the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. And this is the U.S. Attorney's Office. Wow. And this is uh, the Department of Justice's website where I'm getting this information. So I know it's all on um, point. Not saying that what they say is true in any of this, because I don't believe a lot of articles and things like that. I, I um, You can't believe everything that the government throws out there. Definitely not. I don't know. Let me tell you something. I'd be gone so, with 10 million. That's it. I'm not greedy. I'd be in the wind. I would. I'd be gone with with one million. I'd be gone. Mm. I'd be in the woods right, so. somewhere in a little cabin with my stacks of money. And an and a new laptop. Putting on a prepaid credit card, ordering shit off of Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Have boxes piled up everywhere. <laughs> they were probably living it up, right? They were probably living yeah. it up. That much money. They look like they were keeping a very low profile. I got to say that, though. I, I don't know what the house looked like, but. Trying. Yeah, trying to. I'd imagine. See, Tommy Boyd agrees with you. A million is enough. I'd leave with 10. 100%. Ra Ra, what's going on? Rara's coming up on an anniversary. Congratulations, Rara. Keep it going. Do it again. Anyone that's out there struggling with drug addiction, just know that you can start your life over right now. I did an interview yesterday with a woman who was trafficked, and she told me incredible story. And um, that one's going to be dropping soon. Wow. There's a lot of big yeah, people about the interviews coming up. A lot of big people coming up. Shit. Can you like and people don't understand like when you when you think of people getting trafficked, you think of girls like handcuffed to a bed and not being able to go anywhere, but they lure them there with drugs and then they mm -hmm. keep them there with drugs. They're like if you don't do this, I'm not going to give you no more drugs. And they just keep stringing them along. And that's yep. what it's all about, I guess. I didn't know. Like, I didn't know the ins and outs of what it was all about. The whole sex trafficking trade, you know? Yeah, it's terrible. Terrible. I got a clip of a video. With her? A little bit of fun today, okay? Oh, dude, go ahead. No, I was going to save this one. No, that one's down the road. 
Um, I was going to save this for another day, but we might as well go over a little bit now. Okay. <laughs> the first time they asked me to do a favor, and it was really Gebbett that was asking me to favor because he lived around the corner. And he was friends with Gotti and friends with me. So he said, would you do me a favor and take the ride? I said, yeah. And we met Gotti to discuss how we were going to do it. And that was probably the, the, the first major step. All right, so listen. I end this video. Mister A, Mister A liar here. He says He's lying. that he didn't know Gotti, right? And then right. all of a sudden he says that he he did know Gotti, and he was involved with the family and Sammy, and him and Sammy did this and that, and then, but in the same breath he says he didn't meet Gotti until. Until he was like, uh, what, 16 or something? 1985? Something like that. He explains it. But he he exposes himself. It's insane. Take a listen. Into uh, becoming later on involved in setting up uh, multiple killing shootings and, and beatings oh. around the city. What was the first time the request was made? Like, uh, how did they know you were the guy to go to? Had you already killed people well, before, or it had never happened before? No, I, you know, most of my friends, unlike what people think, because they know my history now, they think I was a wild kid with guns and knives and bats. It was actually the complete opposite. All my friends are in seven and nine gang. Uh, my f first friend, Michael Str So seven now he nine says gang. that he wasn't a wild kid. Listen, he says he wasn't a wild kid with bats and knives. All his friends were, right. but he wasn't. I thought he was brought up to be a mafia-trained killer by his dad, right? Right. That's what he what said. What year was this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Batten ends up killing a kid at 16, going to prison. Another young guy, Tommy Turner, kills another guy. Uh, that works at Dick's Deli with us. Uh, and uh, they try to jump him. He stabbed the guy up. Uh, he went to jail. So these guys that were growing up with me, the Bonner brothers, they're using guns. Everybody's using guns. My friend Mikey uh, Merlo gets shot in the head with a shotgun, uh, chasing a guy that had the gun. So he'll tell you the mentality of us. He, he's chasing a guy that actually has the shotgun with no gun, and he loses his life there. So I was kind of innocent compared to them. I wasn't running around with guns. I was fighting with my hands. As what, John? I'm getting uh, acclimated <laughs> with all my friends and was surrounded. Oh, my God. Now, everybody they saw all, that movie, Gotti. They're right? all script the, writers. The one with John Travolta, right? It's insane. Yeah. You guys all seen that movie with, with Gotti, right? With John Travolta, right? So he says the exact story that's in that movie, Gotti. He explains it, but he puts himself in John Jr.'s shoes. He says, God, he wanted me there every day in the morning, in the night. He wanted right. me there. Right. Like, watch what he says. It's so funny. Uh, people that are surrounded around my life, I start slowly picking up knives, bats, and then I go into the guns. So after that shooting with Gebbit, I think that opened the door for people to say, oh, this kid will do anything. Mm. Got it. So what was your first experience with knives and bats? Was it still in your teens or? Were oh, you... yeah, it was in my teens. Oh, yeah. it was in your yeah. teens. Yeah. By the time I'm 17, uh, I start using a bat like crazy, too. At uh, 17? 17. <laughs> By the time I'm 19, I've stabbed a couple of guys, batted a couple of guys. I got stabbed up and batted myself at 19. I almost lost my life that year. I was in and out of the hospitals for about a year. And uh, now I really understood the life. And I started to understand, as I'm climbing up the ladder, I'm losing my cousin, Patsy Adriano Sr. gets killed, and Mikey Merlo gets killed, and Billy Estrema gets killed. And uh, yeah, that's my first year. I was young. I was 19 years old. What happened? When that happened to you, were, were you like, I cannot believe I just did this? What, what the hell just happened? Or were you? I was mad because uh, I talk about this. Gotti and a kid, Jerry, were following us in a K-car, Junior, and they were supposed to be our blockers. And they took off and made a left when the police were chasing us. Happened, the police just stumbled on us. They were coming in the direction of the shooting. It wasn't, we weren't far from the precincts. 
from 102nd Precinct. So there's a lot of police cars there. I mean, for them to be coming down the block at that time, you got some bad luck. So after we do the shooting, I would think, you know, I wasn't sure how I would react either, like you're saying. Naturally, you're not sure. Are you going to hold your mud or are you going to panic or are you going to... It became very natural to me. It was very easy. I pulled away. <laughs> the cops were chasing us. Gebbett left the gun in my car and he jumped out while I was moving. I was going slow down a, a, a one-way street. Not slow, but I was coming up to the stop sign. And he jumped out. He said, let me out. As he jumped out, he left the gun and the cops started chasing me and my... My follow call, my backup call, was supposed to be Gotti and his kid Jerry. Wow. Now listen to what he says when he's when he's running away, jumping fences. He's taking apart the gun and throwing it in the gutters. Who's seen While that he's movie running. before? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, watch. And they had an excuse why they jumped out. So really, I'm the only guy holding a mud. And I was heading down towards Atlantic Avenue. It was the one, I know the streets there because we live there. And I know it's a one way. I open up the passenger door. I open up the other door. I take the gun and I start huffing on my feet. I leave the car so the cops can't go by. I get across Atlantic Avenue. I start jumping fences in some backyards and I'm taking the gun apart and dropping it in sewers as I'm running. And I get myself back to our club on 113th Street and I'm steaming. And I says, now I want Gabbett. This is the first time I'm saying, okay, I'm going to get Gabbett. So Gabbett came to the shooting high. He was smoking dust. And he's a wild guy. He, he Who's seen that before? Anyone seen that before? Oh, wow. he must have been hit high. Wow. <laughs> this guy's a great storyteller, I'm telling you. He's great. I heard. Telling stories. I heard he... Uh... Uh, took a bat to the doctor that delivered him after he smacked him on the ass. <laughs> <laughs> James, what's up, man? Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he did. He beat the beat the doctor to death. Into a you know who I am? Bam! He beat him to death. <laughs> he beat him to death, but he survived. No, no doubt, I know Gavin since he's a kid. He's a shooter. He shot a lot of guys, but he's a you know he's a guy that's smoking angel dust. He's so I, I look at him in a different light now. You're weak. You can't do work without doing that. You left me, and I'm looking at Gotti, and I'm thinking, hmm. that's all I'm thinking. And uh, why I stick Ooh. around is because I have a bigger plan for myself. Because everybody asked me that question, why do you stick around? I says because Junior wasn't my direction. His father was the direction I was trying to go. And we, we all mingle, inter, intermingle with each other. We do business with each what? other. We fight with each other. But we also kill each other on orders. Yeah. So it, it, it's it's not as simple and cut and dry that people, there's a lot of people all right, out there all right, that so think listen. they know the mob. And they think they All right, so you heard what he said, right? We intermingle oh. with each other, but we kill each other on orders. So then he starts explaining how all these people in the Gambino family were getting killed. But he was right. their top enforcer and top hitman. He didn't do shit. How come he didn't yeah. do nothing to retaliate <laughs> against any of these people? Right. Well, he wasn't That's asked the to. question. He wasn't asked to. Oh, oh, he wasn't asked to. Because <laughs> he wasn't in the mob. That's why. No shit. understand it and there's people that are so naive and there's people that think they're uh, experts in this world and this life there's guys like sammy gravano who's a friend of mine and uh, other guys Ooh. that there are ex-skippers and bosses and underbosses that we're all in touch with and we live that life and even us we have daily problems understanding the life and the treachery and as we all got out of the life and moved on with our lives or our friends died or got killed you know, it, there's people that challenge us, and these days, you know, you could challenge anybody through a computer. Well, they talk, and they just talk such nonsense because they have no idea or clue of the treachery that involves when you get to the level that we were playing at. And so, so, at, so, what's the next play? So now they're coming. The brothers are coming. You're in the car. You're like, well, I gotta go. These guys. He knows what's going on. The orders are coming from the top. You go in. So now there's almost a level of accountability from his end, and the son is a friend, but it's not, you're not yet reporting to anybody, or are you? Well, now I start reporting. It's about close to uh, Paul Castellano getting killed. So it's the end of 84 about uh, right, prior to Paul getting killed. What? I start reporting and having con Now, I have a video where he says, 
he met Gotti Sr. after Paul got killed. Right now, he says he starts reporting to Gotti Sr. before Paul got killed. This guy can't make his mind up. Well, that's what he says. It gets good. You can't you can catch him in a blatant lie. It's coming up. Conversations. Uh, more with Senior Gotti. Uh, prior to that, I was involved with uh, Jeannie Gotti, Johnny Cornelia, uh, anybody that was around. Willie Boy Johnson uh, was on a half sheet with him, and Gotti Sr. sent me to him. So I understood that Gotti was my partner, mm -hmm. the father. Uh, and we had the New York Mets gambling with me. <laughs> so uh, what? So when I, 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 I moved to a different level. Uh, we used to play, at, uh, we used to hang out at a place called Channel 80. And it was a known spot for all so gangsters. You'd pull up with a boat. We all had cigarette boats in those <laughs> days. Uh, I had a 280 Baja with Gotti Jr. And we'd pull up to those places and uh, Roger Basile owned it. He was a... That was you Junior's mean Gotti boat. Jr. had a boat. Correct. Yeah, Junior Correct. had a boat. You never had a boat there. This Correct. guy's he's so fucking full of shit. It's like There's, insane. He, he believes this shit. Junior, so bad. Yes. Yeah, he believes his own lies. Yep. Like, and he's he says it like it's true. What? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You heard him try to catch himself. He's like, Yeah, we used to play. I mean, we used to go. <laughs> <laughs> we used to play cowboys and indians Watch. he gets he 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 gets caught out in a lie right in this interview it's like blatantly obvious wait till you hear it it's, it's so great around jimmy burke from goodfellas uh, his son frankie was a good friend of mine he gets killed also and uh i start understanding that uh we're all uh, living a pretty dangerous life now any moment, anybody could get killed. It didn't matter who it was, where it was, uh, in your house, in a business. And my good friend, Greg <laughs> Ryder, was chopped up and left somewhere. Nobody ever found his body. While his father did life, didn't give up, Gotti Sr. could have never spent one day, Mark Ryder, in prison, and nobody did anything about it. And in my belief, they ordered it. They okayed it. They didn't order the murder of Greg Ryder, but they okayed it. And I could go on with that list. Little Anthony Mancuso was killed over a, a dispute in, in uh, I'm trying to think of bedrocks, with the owner. Did anybody kill the guy that killed him? Regardless if the guy was wrong or right. Our laws, you can't put your hand on a made guy. He killed him. God, he didn't do anything about it. Nobody did anything about it. Why not? So we believe in nothing. We believe in money. And these kids think that this loyalty, I just named every boss that's ratting. I just named Sammy Gavano. Let's put somebody in his shoes. He was quiet. He never got caught on tapes. He didn't brag. He didn't talk about murders that we committed in the past. That it's, it's our law. If you do bring it up, you're killed for it. He didn't go against his boss. He was a big money maker. He was a family man. He didn't run around like a lot of us did with women. He was a perfect gangster. That guy was a perfect gangster. And he was quiet. Now he's known to be a rat, right? That's what the, the journalists around the world projected him as. That's what the gangsters did. But who's really the rat? No, this no, 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 no. You <laughs> are the fucking rat, Johnny. You the and Sammy the Gravano. Ball. They didn't project him as that. Mm -hmm. That's what he is. Like, that's what it is. So what is he even talking about? This guy's Did fucking you know? delusional, man. Like, bad. I noticed he left his own name out. Huh? He left his own name out. Yeah, why'd he leave his own name out? Yeah, I, yeah, the journalists are projecting him as a rat. He's not a rat, right? No. <laughs> Humboldt County, how are you? Thanks for joining us. <laughs> it's so funny, man. Yeah, he walked on the moon, too. He's one of them guys. <laughs> Angela, how are you? Total bullshit. Watch, well, it gets it, better. This guy did everything from Gotti gave him up every which way. And he didn't get a chance to kill Gotti. Maybe if he got a chance to, he would have never spoke. But instead, he was in handcuffs, going to do 10 life sentences because of Gotti's big mouth, because he betrayed Sammy. Whoa. Sammy didn't betray anybody. Wait, wait. Did you just say if Sammy had the chance to... What did he just say? Sammy... Sammy didn't 
Sammy didn't betray anybody. Gotti betrayed him. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. I'll be right back. But who's really the rat? This guy did everything for him. Gotti gave him up every which way. And he didn't get a chance to kill Gotti. Maybe if he got a chance to, he would have never spoke. But instead, he was in handcuffs, going to do 10 life sentences because of Gotti's big mouth, because he betrayed Sammy Gravano. Sammy didn't betray anybody. Wait, wait. Did you just say if Sammy had the chance to kill Gotti, he would have? Yeah, of course. He would have? 100%. Do you think Sammy was a threat to Gotti because the street saw Sammy more as the power guy than Gotti because Sammy was getting all the context and the relay like he could eventually be a boss or not no, at all? No, because Sammy didn't have an ego. He had no aspirations to take over. He didn't care that John wanted Sammy to be Sammy didn't front. want to be a boss. No, Sammy had no... Was that known? Yeah, it was known because Sammy didn't have the ego. Sammy stood back. Sammy only cared about making money, staying with his family. How much time did you spend with Sammy? Over the years, I was, he was always around, like I was around. I, you know, you watch. But were you buddies? Were you friends? No, I wasn't or, buddies with him at all. I, Come on. And I shoot Mike Pip and two other guys in front of 116th, 101st Avenue. Yes, I did. See, the difference between what I do and I can go on. We could keep talking. I don't know how many guys I shot. I killed two guys for sure on my property, maybe three. Uh, Danny Morrow, unlike some of the stories that said that never happened, testified and he's on tape. It'll be out in Perfect Gangster too. Dino Finelli helped me get rid of the guns afterwards, seen tons of blood all over. These are regular guys, dumped the guns for me, and testified also and did a, an interview on tape. Carmine Roan, multimillionaire, legitimate guy, owns Tomatoes Restaurant, testified, I did, he was out the property. Steve Lacretondo, insurance man, regular guy, testified, I did. So, you know, when guys are talking out of line or out of school, I hear it all the time. So why is Sammy Gravano, the underboss of family, talking about me in that, in that way? Why did Ronnie want him, captain of the Gambino family? I robbed all his bookmakers, he was a one-time friend of mine. I robbed Jojo Carrazzo, at one time concierge of the family, I robbed his bookmakers. Why did anybody get any retaliation against me? I robbed two. <laughs> Do you hear this shit? What's a, what's a concierge? I can't. I... <laughs> <laughs> bro it's so funny it's like sammy must have paid john the three thousand back oh no, my he's not god great. no this is an older this is this is an older lie session with with uh with a liar too bad <laughs> you couldn't take funny. did you him having an argument with himself with, with the different lies how they changed over the years you know what I'm saying? That would be a oh, I can. I can. Oh, but I can. Oh. <laughs> I just need a little <laughs> bit of time, and I'll be able to. I'll get right on that. Don't worry. That would be him great. Him versus him. Him versus him, yeah. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. Well, that is scary. So what do you think of all them uh, truths he told? <laughs> I didn't see any. <laughs> Did he see? Did he say the part? Yeah, he didn't see any, right? <laughs> no. Did you see the part where he said he got he made him sit in the made him come to the uh come to the social club and sit there all day long? Did you hear that one? No, it didn't come up. Oh, I heard it, yeah. I've heard it in the past. Is it on this one? Don't worry, here. Let's play it. Yeah, let's play a little bit more. I, I don't have a lot of time left. I gotta I got uh, okay. things I gotta do, but here, let's play a little more put my name in his mouth and I taped it. Uh, Steve Catalano was there. He's still alive. Johnny Burke's in jail, even though I don't like the kid. He was there. <laughs> he didn't want to come near the guy because the guy was too big. So these guys are alive. I can go on. Why did Ronnie want him? In his own words, in his opening statement, say, if I ain't nice to the Johnny a -Light, he'll kill me like he killed everybody else. Why did he say it a dozen times to get his paperwork in his opening statement? It's out all over the internet. That I'm John Gotti Jr.'s partner. I'm in the partners in the drug business. Over and over and over again, he repeated it. Why did Stevie Newell, a guy I shot, who I'm personally friends with now, and we had a disagreement that Gotti said they would protect him, I shot him. Did he say on tape, you don't know Johnny and he'll shoot anybody anywhere. And, did, and John Gotti Jr. ratted on him, ratted on me. Well, became a rat and he called Stevie a rat. It wasn't true. Why did Stevie Newell say that he sees captains in the Gambino family answer to me? He grew up in our neighborhood. So when guys talk, and I hear these tough guys <laughs> on the internet, captains. and you got. This is amazing.
He sees captains in the Gambino family answer to him. Yeah. You believe that yeah. shit? Yeah. And he must have called John Gotti a rat four or five times already. Yeah. But there were captains answering to him. Captains. To him. <laughs> you can't make this up, man. Like, you couldn't. He believes it. You couldn't I keep write telling a you fucking that. script. He does. It is. He believes yep. it cold heartedly. He does. Listen, this was the truth. This. He mm. slept over. He slept over a few times. Like a all of a times. sudden, he's running the Gambino family operation from, from the inside. He's the real front boss. Not Gotti. What the fuck? That is unbelievable to me. This is what the picture's supposed to look like. Look at my underboss <laughs> lips. Chief. <laughs> Chief Suckums. Fred Cheese in the background. <laughs> Too funny. He just, do you see hey, what he dropped last dude, yesterday? Right? It's what really happened. Who, Cheesy? Uh, Mike, yeah, Cheesy. Who, Cheesy or, or, or Mikey Scabs? No, Cheesy. <laughs> Cheesy. Mikey Scabs. Mikey Scabs. <laughs> Why would he drop? This so he's talking about people talking about him, and uh, it doesn't bother him. Sure, it bothers him a lot, a oh, real yeah. lot. Did oh, you, you wouldn't say it. Clip of Joey Merlino. Did you see the one about him talking about his father? Yeah, Gene, you don't even know who your father is. Chaz is probably your father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chaz, that's right. <laughs> that was hilarious. And then he's holding up the three o twos with all the names he mentioned. <laughs> Too funny, man! You can't make this shit up. You can't. Freaking slumber party! Damn right. <laughs> it's like I said, you know, I get it. I get why they do it, but they act like it's okay, and it's not. No. He took you know over the Gambino family. He was the one running shit from the inside out. He was running the Gambino. I believe it. You know, I believe mm. this guy. Everything he said. <laughs> I can't, man. But well, when I see these interviews and this guy talking the way he talks, I just, I die laughing. And I hope you guys enjoy this content. Let's watch a little bit more and then I got to get the fuck out of here. It's All like right. Vito Guzzo. Who's doing 30 something years? He's been my enemy for years. Did I have him shot? Yes. Semi Gravano did an interview, his first one since he's been home from his 15 years he just did. And his interview was about John A. Light. He does a, an audio interview with uh, a guy named Andy Deliano, who did Perfect Gangster One. Now, why is he bringing up the $3,000 that he paid? Sammy Gravano to talk about him and he uses that little clip of the fucking little shit where John A. Light's an Italian yeah. mafioso. I wish he was in my crew. I thought you were in his crew, Johnny. Right, right. What happened? I thought you were in the Gambino family. So why does he wish you were in his crew if you were in the Gambino family? I right. get it. It makes no sense. Sammy ruined uh, all his plans. In Europe shortly. And he discusses uh, what I am. And uh, what's a thug, what's a mafioso, what's a gangster. And he says most people, this is his words, are uh, either like a Michael Francis, who's a mafia mafioso, earner, but not a killer. He doesn't put a gun in his hand. He's a very intelligent man. I like him. I respect him. He's speaks well he turned his life around he's doing the right thing and then there's guys <laughs> like frank collada who's a, a thug gangster a killer so there's two types mm -hmm. sammy gave me in that interview or he said about me that i'm both i'm a, <laughs> and a thug whoa and, uh, i'm a mafioso and i'm an he's albanian both. Mafioso he's both. that uh has total respect from the mob world and that uh 
I'm a professional hitman and I'm a killer and I'm the Gambino's Gotti's hitman and, uh, and unfortunately I was around the wrong guys, the Gotti's. Those are his words, not mine. Those are, those are recorded words from how, how many total people have you done a, a Those are recorded words. Wow. Those are recorded words from the most wow. infamous rat ever, Sammy Gravano. And now he says Sammy Gravano's a no good lying piece of shit. He didn't do shit. But he was what he, happened. Yeah. Listen, he was if he wasn't even in on the planning the family and they didn't retaliate. One of his listen, interviews he said John that Gravano wasn't even in on the planning of the Castellano hit. It was all John. Now in this video, he's saying John is a rat and didn't do shit, and they he did everything, and he was the go-to guy. And what the fuck? It's wild. Those words cost three thousand dollars because he ain't getting his fucking That's money right. back. And look at this. Amen. His little rat friend, his little rat friend Suckums too, goes there and blows fucking Sammy, right? He goes there and sits on Sammy's lap. Whatever happened to loyalty? Whatever happened to it? There is none. There is none. No. No. There really, I mean, you can go back as far as you want. The loyalty is only there when uh, everything is going good and, and everybody's sharing. But when a bigger piece of meat comes up, Rick the loyalty goes. Back. <laughs> <laughs> Rick wants his jewelry back. <laughs> what is it? He's the banana hitman now. People are putting. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I pulled her hair out. I'm gonna I'll fix it. Aneurysm. No. I pulled her hair out. I'll fix it for you. <laughs> I did this to the door. I pushed the door in. In this Airbnb, right? Yes, I pushed the door. And his car is on file here. Yours. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix the door for you. So if I get charged for this, you're not being charged. I'm suing you. I'm taking I'm you to court. I'm fixing you. I'm fixing it. Wow. <laughs> Too funny, man. But yeah, man, you, thank you for you, joining Tommy. me today. I really appreciate you. Yeah, sorry about the mic. Salvatore says, Vaseline specialist. It's all good. Don't worry about it, man. We'll get it together maybe on the next one. But all I appreciate right, you, man. I appreciate I you too, brother. I got to start doing. And uh, yeah, professional door breaker. He should put that on his next application, right? Right. I appreciate all you guys. Hit the like button. Go subscribe to Sonny Grasso. He has a Patreon channel. Go check it out. Go check out his, his Facebook, too. He has a quote of the day. And uh, hope you guys all have a great day. Thank you, brother. If you like this content, hit the like button. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. And if you don't like this content, too fucking bad. Start your own podcast. And remember, don't be a John A. Like.